end of day four now. Well, I won't lie to you, this is day five, but I'm bolting this on to the end of day four. Just going to go and show you what magic has been happening. Macro Manston is proud. Now then, you'll see over there, there's the pipe for sucking the water out, which means they're pumping water back into here, which means all this bit is done and round the back end of the lake as well. Check out the slider. What I asked him to do to save some time and obviously save some money, where he had dug down against here is all hard rock. And I said to Tao, I said, well, don't dig right down to start the slope there. Just come up. I mean, that's probably about half a meter up now. Slope it back. And on top of there, he's built it up a little bit. Let's go and have a look around the end because that is. It's a thing of beauty. This is where Toon and I started sucking the water out with our trusty Honda. So there was a dam here, he's whipped that out, so he scraped it in from the other side. I know the camera's a bit shaky, but I'm, I'm holding my coffee trying not to spill that. Now there's a little bit of remnants left on the bottom. I've told him, don't worry about that fella. Just get the bulk of it dug out. We're not bothered if it's Bahoo Bahi, in fact I prefer it. Fish aren't like robots, they like little nooks and crannies to hide in. Yeah, there's a big, a big boulder over there, twice the size of me. Just leave that. We don't want that up on the island, although the goats would love to climb on it. But it's lovely and smooth. What he was doing as well was, I'm trying, I'll try and get it on camera when he does it again. Anytime he's found a big, I can't really see it here, a big old tree. He shoves it into the ground and then when his spoon gets all, or bucket, I don't know what the correct terminology is, when it gets all clayed up, he, uh, he uses it like a toothpick and scrapes the inside of his bucket out. It's pretty cool. Right, let's get a shot from down the other end. It's going to look mint. Let's try and uh, climb up here without breaking my neck. you get a better view then. We're getting some beautiful mornings. Nice and cool really, but as soon as you get to about 8 or 9 o'clock, the heat starts rising quite quickly. Hey, he's not bad is he, eh? It's a shame I couldn't get any action of him doing the slope yesterday. It's just that at the moment, because we can't put goats onto Goat Island, uh, we have to be with them all the time until we get all our cell, cell grazing areas fenced off. So we do miss out on quite a bit of recording, but... That's oh, the bloody dogs. I thought it was a monitor lizard coming to track me down. Yeah, so um, we would like to record more. Uh, Toon's really, really ill at the moment, so uh, she's getting plenty of bed rest. And uh, I'm basically a shepherd. Is it shepherd for goats? I don't know. A lot, a lot sore to move. Not concerned about that. If anything, we're going to be a little bit short of what we want. But uh, hey ho, we'll make do with what we got. I think it's going to look pretty fantastic. The overall depth is three and a half meters. But near where we're going to put the road in, we're going to get Macro Man to dig some really, really deep areas around there. That way, anyone that wants to come fishing and doesn't want to be too far away from the house, well, let's say the, the fridge with the cold beer in and they're ordering food, then um, they'll have a couple of really, really good swims that should be productive for the, for the big stuff like the Mekong catfish. They like, the, like, they like it as deep as you can get. Water level when it drops, I suppose it's getting on for about a metre dropping. Um, which obviously, even with my maths, means that there's two metres left. Two metres is more than enough for Thai fish to survive. Obviously, depending on your stocking levels. Ours won't be overstocked, because we're going to have lots and lots of predatory fish in here, keeping the, uh, the silver fish numbers down. If we need to put some air in here in the future as the fish grow bigger and bigger, then, then so be it.
plans for the remainder of the dig. You can see here it's been left quite narrow, that's what we wanted. Uh, it's just gone in there and sloped it back. We're going to take out the road here. Remember we've got the access road over the far side, it's going to put a new, a new little bridge over there. This is going to be sloped all along here and round the corner to roughly about the Sadao tree and then it's going to hook left. Now money permitting, we're going to go wider there, the same over the far side that is done previously. And over the back end there, there's a separate bit that's all coming out and that's where he's going to do some really really deep areas. So there's going to be a lot less soil coming out this side. When he goes to do the far side over there, I'm going to truck that out. We got a confirmed price with the boss yesterday. We've said we don't want the useless Kombota, that's probably a bit harsh, but next to useless Kombota then, uh, while the soil's all wet, and in fact we don't want it when it's dry anyway. So what, the, what she said was um, we shall do 250 a truck, that, uh, that include, it's all inclusive for the, the macro and the trucks, get it all spread out so the macro hasn't got to go spreading this out a second time, which is far from cost effective. And then once it's dry, Macro Man is going to come back with the big Ford tractor, which is out on another job at the moment, and is going to spread that all out for us. So now it's not so much that we were just pissed off with the Kubota driver. We weren't particularly happy with him, I'll be honest about it. Uh, Toom was almost in full rage. Uh, but the, the vehicle just was not up to it. And even if it's dry, I know it's quite cheap at 400 baht an hour, no, it, it just doesn't shift enough soil in one go. So this will be all skinny along here, just all nicely sloped off. Hooks are left there, down to the Sadao tree that you can see on the top. And if he's done this really quickly, uh, we'll change as we go along and get some more soil out there. Really, the higher we get it, the, the safer it will be for the goats. We just cannot afford for this to flood. Oh, I can hear cobblers started up. That means Macro Man has uh, done his running repairs on it. He's changed the little teeth, well, say little, huge teeth on his scoop, on his bucket. And it uh, looks like he's ready for action. So that's the next day's recording ready to start. It's midway through the afternoon now. And cobblers has only just been fired up uh, this morning for about two hours. Macro man levelled the uh, the soil that was in huge mountains, so he's got that fairly level for him to go over it later on when it's a bit drier. Use the Ford tractor. Uh, since then, uh, while I've been pumping the water out of here, this was quite a large expanse of water. So he's put another dam in just over there. I'll go and show you in a minute. And uh, now it's now they've done that, the, the water's dropping a lot lot quicker. So I'll go over there and I'll show you and talk through what we've got planned for it. Uh, you can see the water level's dropping quite quickly now on the right hand side. I've just had a look around the corner there. There are quite a few fish going along the shelf, or the slope rather. They're obviously feeding on bits and bobs as the water's dropping down. So Toon asked him to leave the little mountain there with the tree on. So I think he's just going to clean around there. All of this tomorrow is going to be uh, trucked out. So I presume he's going to bridge bridge that gap a little bit there and uh, just do a little bit of prep work.
when they first started pumping there was quite a, a waterfall effect there and loads of catfish uh, what else were there snakehead and like the silverfish the barbs they were all jumping trying to trying to jump over the top it was quite <laughs> quite good to watch uh, the reason um, that he didn't just break through and let the water through which is what I thought he was going to do he said as soon as he would break through there the force of water on the other side with it being so low this side that he just would have washed the uh, the dam so it would have undone a lot of hard work that he had done so he will be uh, digging that out later I tell you what I thought it looked nice before but now it's gradually filling up beautiful lines someone said quite a while ago when we had the initial outline dug it had so many curves we should call it Pamela Anderson Lake I think, uh, I think they got a good point oh I can see loads of fish bub 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 down the side let's go and have a look at the end the goats have been making good headway through here horrible stuff this they don't like it initially well they like to eat it but they don't like walking through it but once there's a little bit of a pathway through it that's it they'll all start going through there and of course they're munching as they go and it soon gets trodden down right got a rocky outcrop come and feast your eyes upon it only problem is standing up here a lot of the time there's a there's a hell of a wind but uh, it's a nice breeze on you but the audio suffers anyway look at that let's try and get it panned around Poshest goats in Thailand going to be living on there. It didn't look half bad, does it? There'll be designated fishing areas dotted around the outside of the lake, but also there's going to be at least one, maybe two, small secluded fishing areas from Goat Island itself. So for those of you that love goats, as long as you don't let them eat your, your bread for your bait uh, you can sit in amongst the goats and uh, do your fishing that way but no sharing the beer either old Geraldine she likes a tipple each corner of the lake is going to be dug out quite a bit to create these sort of nice sized fishing areas so I'm thinking over that side probably about there we'll have a nice shaded area here to fish from and steps down as well so as the water goes up and down it won't be dangerous landing these huge fish one of you guys said um came up with the idea of fishing platforms on pontoons so as the water goes up in the rainy season and drops down in the dry season um, they, they would just go up and down with the levels of the water it's a nice idea it's something that we did think about before um, but I think I think it's going to be a cost issue at the end of the day it's costing enough to do this and we've still got to put the goat house on here well it's definitely a huge project far bigger than anything that we've tackled before me and Toon but not not at all daunting we've got conviction in our actions and we've thought about this for a long long time yeah I know the goats are something fairly new uh, but this creation behind the back of me uh, that's been in the that's been in the planning for a long long time there's still plenty of other development to go on in the land we've got quite a few rye behind here this is where we had our first go at doing rice which although was enjoyable uh, it didn't make any money it saved a bit on animal feed I know but it really wasn't worth the effort and at the end of the day it affected my asthma and Toon's hay fever far too much so now we just buy the rice from uh, neighbouring farms but that won't be continuing for quite some time now because no one's growing any rice at all or no one's growing anything really so the plan is all this area here all these rye here leading up to the eucalyptus we've got about three three and a half thousand eucalyptus trees there so butting up to those we're going to be growing additional fodder for the goats I don't know if it's going to be napier weed there's another couple of types of grasses as well that we could use 
Um, but there's lots of things we're going to be growing for them. We want to be self-sufficient here as far as the goats go. We don't want to be buying any food in. Um, yeah, I know we'll be getting pellets and that sort of thing just for the for the mothers, the new mothers that are given birth. But apart from that, guys, we're really going to concentrate on trying to sustain our own herd without any input from outside. If, however, we get to so many numbers in the future of goats, then, well, if we've got that many, as in sort of like 200 plus, um, we should be minted by then. So we'll buy an old banger, an old pickup truck, and we'll go out, we'll, we'll cut extra gits in just to supplement all the food that we're growing on here. But there's rye, well, there's 50 rye in total. And uh, I'm sure we can keep a good head of goats here and keep them all fed from here. That's the plan anyway. I'm sure it's possible with, with cell grazing and keeping the, the herd moving around. And if it all goes tits up, someone can buy it for an absolute bargain, can't they, eh? And I'll go back to England and uh, start teaching health and safety again, eh? Death by PowerPoint. I don't think so, jog on. Right, I need to get back and stroke a goat. Look forward to seeing you on the next video, guys. I'll just go and watch Macro Man for another five minutes. This isn't good. It's towards the end of the day, Macro Man is just bringing cobblers back and she is sick. She just cut out. We all know Macro Man would never stall it. And uh, she didn't sound right. And he's bringing her back at snail pace. That'll just be our bloody luck, that. That is one, one sick excavator. As we say, the devil pisses in our eyeball one more time. We have got a cobbler's down. Macro man said she's sleeping here tonight. Oh dear. Uh, but we are going to create a couple of really deep holes. Well, I say really deep, but an additional meter or two. And hopefully the, uh, the big make on catfish will love holding up in there. Of course, if uh, you pay Toon to be a fishing guide for you for the day, she'll tell you where the, uh, she'll tell you where the holes are. I can't, no, I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> 